What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with an unboxing for you of the Motorola Flipside. Let's go ahead and see if this guy's worth your hard earned 99 bucks. Alright, so as I just mentioned, this is going to cost you $99 on contract with AT&T. Go ahead and run through the specs as I take out the phone. Let's go ahead and first look at the box, letting you know that it's got Android. It's running Android 2.1. It looks like there's a blank bubble there, not filled out. It's got Wi-Fi and, of course, email. Picture of the device on the front. Just some legal information on the side. Some uh, numbers, IMEI stuff, and uh, some specs on the back. We'll go ahead and go through all those in a minute, but I want to jump into the phone stuff uh, nice and quickly. All right, so here we've got a quick start guide. Go ahead and pull that off to the side. Got a turn this over information to set up your Moto Blur uh, account. Alrighty. So go ahead and pull out the phone, push it off to the side for just one moment, and see what you're going to get in your box. We've got a micro USB to USB syncing cable, uh, pretty standard for, uh, for smartphones nowadays. Push that off. We've got a USB wall charger. We've got a 1540 milliamp hour battery, good for probably a little over seven hours. And we've got the back cover. Let's go ahead and see what the back of this is gonna look like, whether or not it's soft touch or plastic or whatever. Uh, it is a uh, soft touch and it's sort of soft touch all the way around. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the phone and let's talk about the specs of the flip side. All right, so this guy has a 3.1 inch capacitive uh, TFT display with a resolution of 320 by 480. As I mentioned, it's running Android 2.1 with Moto Blur sitting on top of it. It's Motorola's proprietary Android skin. It's powered by a TI OMAP 340, which is gonna get you 720 megahertz processor. Uh, it's gonna have a decent amount of RAM with 512, so multitasking should happen with relative ease. On the back, it's got a three megapixel camera right there, which is gonna shoot uh, just standard definition video. Uh, it does have flash light. Again, not the thing you use in a blackout, but the way you can view flash content on your phone. It doesn't have flash 10.1 support because it's not an Android 2.2 device. Uh, and again, it's got a 1540 uh, hour milliamp hour battery. So it's sort of a unique phone. Let's look at it real quickly and I'll pop the battery in and see if we can get it to turn on. Uh, you've got four capacitive buttons here and sometimes on Moto Blur devices, you only get three and you don't have that search button. So I am happy that Motorola uh, included that here. What's sort of unique about this phone is this huge uh, touch navigation. So a lot of Android phones are foregoing, whether or not it's a scroll ball or foregoing a D-pad. Uh, Motorola has sort of taken a different approach here with the flip side and put in this very spacious uh, touch navigation pad. We'll touch on how that well that works in the review and whether or not uh, it's worth the smaller screen size or sort of you wish you'd rather have a larger screen with the capacitive button sort of in typical array across the bottom. So it's called the flip side, sort of like its cousins, the back flip and the flip out because it, well, it sort of flips out to the side. I guess it's more of a sliding mechanism, uh, but it does have a very nice full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, the keys are a bit rubberized. There's not that much key throw to them because it is a slider. Uh, you can see they're relatively flat, but the keys are nicely spaced out. There's no problem really hitting the top row if you're worrying about your finger hitting it. Oftentimes sliders, uh, that is a problem. It's got a very large uh, spacebar key, function key right there. There's a dedicated row for numbers. They're sort of inlaid uh, on the top row of keys. You've got a enter and return, and again, a uh, big spacebar, and you have a four-way D-pad. So continuing our tour here, on the uh, left-hand side of the device, we've got just your charging port. On the right-hand side, you've got a volume rocker up and down and a camera button. On the bottom, just a microphone, top 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and the power and lock button. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the battery and see uh, what this thing can do. It's also gonna come bundled with a two gig uh, SanDisk card. It's probably gonna ask me to set up a Moto Blur account, but let's go ahead and check it out anyway. Pop in the battery here and see what we've got going on. So they're not gonna pop a SIM card in yet, uh, but when I do test this phone for my full review, I'll do my typical sort of array of tests. So I'll do sort of 20 calls in different areas to gauge signal strength 
and whether or not there are any sort of dropped call issues. Although I found recent Motorola devices to actually be a relatively strong uh, in that department. So I'll go ahead and put the back on. This is always sort of a struggle to see if I can do this uh, the first time or not. Let's see if it just snaps in, which it looks like it does. Sort of a snap and slide. So there is uh, the whole phone with the uh, back sort of on. Let's see if that's going to slide off. Nope, back is on. So let me do a real quick size comparison for you so you can see uh, how big uh, this device is going to be and whether or not it's the right one for you. Uh, this is more of a mid-range uh, Android handset, certainly slated below AT&T's Galaxy S series of phones. So first, let's bring in its AT&T stablemate. Here is uh, the iPhone 4. You can see what they look like next to each other. Stacked. The flip side uh, actually is a uh, relatively thin phone. Uh, despite having a full QWERTY keyboard. Let's go ahead and bring in a, a few other devices for comparison purposes. Uh, here is the Palm Pre 2 with a uh, sort of a downward sliding QWERTY mechanism. And go ahead and stack all these guys and make a smartphone sandwich. You can see sort of how thick those are. And uh, let's bring in one more for uh, size comparisons. Here is uh, the very large uh, Evo 4G. This one does not have a slide out QWERTY keyboard. I'm uh, certainly best it in the thinness department because of that. Let's go ahead and see if we can power this sucker on or see how long uh, or how quick that takes. Although I assume as far as we're going to get is an introduction to Moto Blur. So let's push these other phones off to the side. I will peel off the plastic because I know how much that bothers you guys. Uh, texting and driving, it can wait. So we've got all of that uh, peeled off. And these are still just capacitive buttons. There isn't any sort of uh, demarcation between them of one big panel on the left side and one big panel on the right. So you've got the Moto Blur logo. This is sort of the uh, the older version of Moto Blur uh, that has the color uh, indicator systems on it. If you go ahead and look at the uh, literature right here, you can see there's a color for uh, your dial pad and for your contacts and the big menu. Some versions of Moto Blur don't have that. So this is about as far as we're going to get. Looks like it is uh, pulling in the right time or at least close to the right time. Uh, I guess it's a 12.38 here in California. I guess the default time here is 12.30. Let's see if it'll let us get to the operating system without signing into Moto Blur. Although I don't think it is uh, going to. Nope. So we'll have to register Moto Blur and I'll come back with a full review here uh, of the flip side and see if it's going to be worth it for you. Anyway guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the website for all of your tech news. For exclusive content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. All those links are down below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.